Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, you know, you got to give Iowa a try. And that's what I'm doing this week. I'm in a production of The Music Man, so I can't be here this Monday night. But our good friend John Taylor will be joining us, along with our very special guest, a guy by the name of Jeff Berlin, who is a great voice actor and promo guy. And he writes stuff. He's also an award-winning national radio campaign writer. Wow, this is going to be a radio week. I can't wait, because John is on a daily show himself in the morning. So... It's all going to be about radio and imaging and all that stuff. I think it's going to be a blast. I'll have a short Widom's World this week about using Twisted Wave stacks and a little discussion about how they can be useful and when maybe they're not appropriate and how you can get one of your own if you need one. And I'll be back in two weeks. So join us Monday night, 9 o'clock in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. And join us in the chat room. We'll see you Monday night and we'll see you there. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia Tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hi, I'm John Taylor in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And we are East West, East West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. <laughs> I'm so glad we rehearsed that. Ah, oh, yeah. It went better during the table read. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> John, thanks a lot for uh, pinch hitting tonight to be on the show, man. You are my absolute favorite guest host. Oh, get out. Well, I think I'm the only guest host. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I'm a dime store Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> no, you know, it's... Here hey, we are. It's Monday night. We're going to be talking in a few minutes with uh, the amazing Jeff Berlin, who is not only just, a, uh, he's, oh, hey, look who's here. Look hey. Who, look who forgot to turn on the on the air sign. Hi, say hi, Dad. Ella, then you got to go. Say hi. Hi, Ella. Hi. It's me. It's me, John Taylor. Hi, John Taylor. You I'm may Ella. remember me from such cartoons as uh, the Chica show where I play Bungie the Bunny. No, you don't remember Bungie the Bunny? Now let's do a pirouette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or um, I Astro saw Blast. You the ball. I saw you at the ball. I saw you at the ball a time ago. Yeah, I remember. Good memory yeah. she has. I saw you on the jungle gym today. You were on the climbing on the jungle gym, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah. Okay, good. Because you know what? Fun is the best thing to have. <laughs> See you later, Ella. Thanks for coming in. Bye, Ella. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Close the door on the way out. <laughs> That's called. Okay, I'll turn, I turned on my turn light. I forgot to oh. turn on the on the air light. She, she, oh. She's well trained. Which She looks up to see if the light's on. Yeah. And if it's not on, she comes in to visit me and I forgot to turn on the light. Well, we're really thankful that she came in to you visit. You know why I forgot always... to turn it on? Because this is how I turn on the on the air light. <laughs> it's, you I have are to a... flick the switch. Is that, is it, what is that, a, a Bluetooth light switch? It's, it's just a wireless white light switch. Yeah, you can stick it wherever you want. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But I want to figure out a way to wire this into my console because I have this little tiny Allen & Heath XB10 on-air console. Exactly. And it has contact closures, so right. if I can rig this up to that, when I turn on the mic, it'll kick on the sign. Well, warm up your soldering iron and Time get on get that. Dad, I need your help. Anyway, thanks, thanks so much to our sponsors, which we try to do at the beginning of the show. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Extra, or VoiceOver Essentials, I should say. Uh, Edge Studio, my fair awesome. employers. And VoiceZam, who's one of our new sponsors to the show. Thanks a lot, Bob, Merkel, and VoiceZam. And VoiceOver Extra, who's been supporting us promotionally since the beginning as well. Thanks to you guys. 
Yeah, voiceover extra is awesome. John Florian has uh, just published an article today on uh, the weekend's award festivities mm-hmm. in New York City and uh, has a full list of all of the, uh, the winners. Yeah, for the uh, Voice Arts Awards. And I've I've been wanting to say uh, congratulations. And that kicks off the first thing I want to talk about, which is a huge congratulations to um our our category mates, VO Buzz Weekly. We were we were both nominated for outstanding VO podcast and uh VO Buzz VO Buzz Weekly took home the trophy this year and well, it's the first year, so who knows what's going to happen in the future, but we'll be back again and nominating Hopefully, getting nominated again for the future awards. But you know, I know how hard Chuck and Stacy uh, oh, yeah. work on that show. I've spoken to Chuck numerous times about how we do our show, and and just they pour an unbelievable amount of time preparing and the post and everything for that show. It's really top notch. So they absolutely yes. deserve the accolades, and it's great. I I wish I could have been there. It would have been a lot of fun. It was just it fell in between two trips, one to New York and one to Florida. It was just a little bit too much traveling for me, so I, I couldn't do it this time. But uh, John, do you know anybody that went to the award show? Um, yeah, um, I know lots of people that went to the award show. Yeah. Lori um, Allen, Lori Allen, yeah. one of my clients, she got two two awards. Joe Cipriano um, won two awards. Exactly, and Scott Brick was there, and I saw uh, Scott, Dave Finoy. Dave yeah. Finoy was the voice of God. I know he loved that. He, he, I could tell he was really into that. Oh yeah, he's he's a great guy. So yeah. yeah, all of our friends, and that's kind of the cool thing about the voiceover industry that you know we we're colleagues, and you know even though there's competition, it's not like it's not like VO Buzz Weekly is your evil nemesis. Not at all. Not at no, all. I mean they're it's, like they're colleagues. Yeah, and, they uh, really they, are. And, and they do a they do a different kind of a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that's I know. prepared. It, it, it was a very <laughs> wide category, right? I mean, it's yeah. yeah. It's, it, they do a very well prepared, well produced podcast. Uh, uh, actually, an interview show, like a TV yeah. show. They have lighting. They have li- we that we do this, you know. And then there's some other folks who did some very fine, actual, real podcasts, which you know? are audio so, only. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're, we're, this it was for a, all sorts of voices. It was a varied category, lots of cool stuff. So. Uh, anyway, it was great, and it was cool to see some of my clients. And then I, I was following them on Twitter, so I was seeing all the awards being announced, and I was amazed. And I, you know, I, I've been in this or been around this for a while. You have John. I'm amazed at how many people I did not know. Right. How many names came up that I was like, I don't know who this person is. Now I want to find out who they are. So, you know, yeah, there's a I lot like of, to know yeah. who I should be resenting. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot and- of discussion about the efficacy or the, even the is it even should there be award shows or if there are award shows what do they do for the talent and are they worth the time and money and effort and everything but bottom line is there's not a bunch of people now that won awards i didn't know who they were were you know now now. and now i want to know who they are yeah yeah so um i think that that tells you something right away and who knows i mean i was looking at an article the other day about the oscars because i was wanted to compare the two and how the Oscars, you know, what is an actual Oscar cost? What's the what's yep. the, statue the statue cost and all that stuff? And and then the article went on to really explain, you know, why the Oscars helps. You know, ob- we know why the Oscars help the people that win the Oscars. So it's just interesting to see if down the road, five, ten, twenty years from now, will this keep going? And will people start hiring you because you won last year's Voice Arts Awards? And I have I have friends that have uh, have won awards, and I I all I always refer to them um, with the award. Yeah. So I will say, you know, I was talking to my friend Pulitzer Prize winner Mark Fiore the other day. <laughs> uh huh. And we were talking about that time we had lunch with uh, multiple Grammy nominated jazz singer Tierney Sutton. <laughs> And I was over at uh, Bruce Valanche's house, and I tripped over his Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no, I don't know a lot of award winners, but I was over somebody's house, and they had this piano. It was oh gosh, it was John. He was a uh, he was the uh, producer of Beavis and Butthead. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, John, I can't think of John's last name. It's awful. I don't but anyway. So. And I was like, I saw this piano, and there were two Emmys on it, and I was like, oh my. God, I cannot believe you have a piano. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> so, but I think, you know, they're, you, they don't give you, uh, you know, we don't have anything that, that really gives us like evidence that we even did the work most of the time, a aside from like an audio book, if it's a CD or right. it's got a hard copy, We're in it's the just out there in the and shadows. it's gone. Yeah. You know, a demo or, uh, you know, something that lives, lives on the web it, only if somebody clicks on it or, or if it's, a, it, you know, a, a short term commercial or a trailer campaign, you know, those things go away so fast. They're so ethereal, I think very ethereal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ephemera. So uh, it just goes away. And so it gives ephemera. you, uh, it gives you some sort of evidence that you, you were here <laughs> mm -hmm. and it does it in a, in a bronze statuette representation. And I have to say every time we have Roy Okelson on the show, Yes. He always starts off, whenever we cut to his camera, you know, in the chat thing, he's polishing his Emmy or, <laughs> you know. I would be polishing my Emmy. It was well, you heard the You heard the old story about uh, Shelley Winters. No. The, uh -huh. the actress. Well, she was up for a, a role in a movie and it was a younger director. And the director uh, said, uh, well, I'd like to, to have you... Uh, audition and uh, could you you know please bring two things that you've you know prepared and mm -hmm. so the rumor has it that Shelley Winters came in with a big bag and pulled out two Academy Awards and went kung, kung, how's that <laughs> I don't know but uh, That's a you know, congrats story. to everybody who won yeah. for anybody who was nominated I know people that were nominated that did not win that still had a blast and I mean come on Joan mm -hmm. Baker throws a party <laughs> she oh, knows that but there's so many things you're right that are going on in the voiceover world like uh you know you're going to be down in fort myers you're going to be racking up frequent flyer miles i am i'm slowly starting to accumulate them on virgin america which happened i know is your favorite one of your favorite absolutely airlines. gotta and love that uh that violet lighting southwest yeah southwest airlines too and um yeah i um randy invited me down to a voiceover mastery event and I, and I was really flattered and i've got prepared a pretty cool presentation i think it's um basically it's personal it was <laughs> i can't remember the name of it it's practical personal studios practical and personal studios yeah, I'm, I'm stealing the personal studios from dan who i think he's kind of coined that phrase but i think it's a good one to get away from that home studio stigma um, but it, it's, it's, a, it's just, I try to did condense down so much stuff that I've gotten and taught and told people about over the years into the, the really practical stuff. So I hope people find it to be really helpful. So I heard there's a few seats left. If you're happen to be, uh, traipsing through Fort Myers or <laughs> you're in driving distance or whatever, or you've got some frequent flyer miles burning a hole in your pocket. It's not a bad place um, to be this time of year as we head into a polar vortex to our friends in the Midwest and in the uh, upper part of the, the West Coast. Okay. There is snow falling right now. Oh, lovely. <laughs> not in here. Indianapolis, there's like 150 car accidents. So, oh, that brings me to this. Yeah, what's going on? Um, make sure you stock up on this product, which uh, I'm, I'm endorsing, but I don't get any free product or anything. You're endorsing oh, it because oh. it just freaking works. It does. Get this stuff as we move into a cold and flu season. It's called Alkalol. Yes, Alkalol. And it is a soothing natural nasal wash and mucus solvent and cleaner. And you basically waterboard yourself with this. Uh, using a, I would recommend a neti pot and you use mm -hmm. distilled water. You don't use tap water because there's some sort of microbe and a lot of tap water supplies that can go through your nasal cavity and right into your brain. So right. you use the distilled water and you go like half and half. And uh, it literally does like melt through whatever is uh, coating your vocal cords and it gets you, it gets you through the session. And uh, I can't say enough about this stuff. It's so you're using it as alcohol. a nasal wash and you're also swishing it as well. And, and alcohol is also made in Boston which would make it a superior product, not unlike the baked beans and the clam chowder. Yeah, the Alkalol Company, P.O. Box 273, Boston, Mass. No oh, kidding. 2133. Well, you can get it anywhere, CVS. Uh, if you, they don't have it on the shelves, you can get it from Amazon. I literally have bottles and bottles. I've been giving them out to friends. <laughs> I bring well, I know, it to a housewarming I, I know. Dan, a personal Dan, studio warning. Dan's a huge fan of that stuff, too. I mean, he, yeah. that stuff. So, yeah. 
There you go. It works. So, do you have a uh, you have some a Widom's World coming up for us? Yeah, after we'll, we'll take a break in a little bit here. After that, um, I've got a Widom's World about Twisted Wave stacks, and then we'll talk a little bit about processing in general, um, when it's appropriate to do a processing, because that's kind of what the stacks are all about. And uh, if you guys are in the chat room watching live, if you have any questions that have to do with processing your audio for auditions or for jobs, let's talk about it. And then um, we'll bring Jeff in at the bottom of the hour, and I guarantee you he'll have his... Uh, He'll have something to add about that because that's what Jeff's expertise is, is in producing amazing sounding finished work. So that among other things, I, John brought Jeff in. I can't believe I, how lucky I am because Jeff is really a genius at this stuff. He's very well regarded and um, I'm so psyched about it. So thank well, you. Well, just to, just to pre-promote Jeff Berlin, uh, he is a seasoned and unique voiceover talent. He is the voice of A and E. Uh, he has voiced radio stations from coast to coast, and I think he's on over a hundred right now. He was recently named uh, to the uh, Benstown Top Fifty you know, right. Greatest Voices of All Time, and uh, and he's a great guy, and he's a total geek. Loving so, it. So we're going to be geeking out, definitely. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. So, uh, John, do you have anything else to say off the top of the hour? Should we take that first break? What do you say? Take the break. Go for the break. Let's take that break. So we'll be right, right back after this short message. Whence came these two radiant celestial brothers united for an instant as they crossed the stratosphere of our starry window? One from the east and one from the west. Very good. And we're back on East West Audio Body Shop. I'm uh, Dan. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm John Taylor. Not the Duran Duran one you put my picture in the promo. That was nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> People were saying, what happened? Did he have an accident? I was feeling a little snarky that night. No, it was awesome. <laughs> um, hey, so... Um People that do voiceover know that because of technology, thanks to Dan and George, we blame them. Uh, and the ability of people to have their personal studios uh, that can be cranked up at any time, day or night. So a lot, a lot of times we have to do scratch. And uh, scratch is when some production company wants to get the job a lot of times, whether it's a trailer or, or a promo package or something, they ask uh, voice talent to provide the sound for free uh, so that they can audition to get the job. And so I had one of these last week for a spot for a, uh, a show that's coming to the Amundsen and a bunch of other theaters. Mm-hmm. It's uh, called Blythe Spirit. Starring Angela Lansbury. And these people asked me, and they're very nice. They asked me to do some scratch, and then they had a couple of changes later in the day. And then I had just put my head on the pillow and I was just drifting off to sleep. And the phone rang at like 9 45 at night. I get up at 3 30 for radio. And they said, Oh, can you make one more change, John? And I was like, Oh, man, I was just really tired. <laughs> I was like, then I thought about it. Angela Lansbury's 89 years old. She's on a five city tour. She's doing six shows a week and two matinees on Sunday. And I can't get up and do a, <laughs> a scratch. What I'll, would Angela Lansbury do? I'll drag she, my ass out of bed. That's right. The show must go on. And it went to final and we got the whole campaign. So 
I know it sounds, sometimes it gets, uh, you know, uh, you're just like, okay. And I want to talk to Jeff about that when we talk to Jeff Berlin in in a couple of minutes, because I don't know of anybody that does the volume of voiceover and how do, how do you keep that energy up and how do you stay in that zone session after session after session, because he's a marvel at it. And we'll find out what, what uh, that secret is. If he'll share his, it's dang impressive. I mean, I, I, I do my little Widom's World thing. I was telling John before the show, I do it. I was doing it at night, late at night, because yep. I could find some undisturbed peace and quiet. But my energy level just was in the tank. It just, it was, it stank. I, it, and I'd watch them and I'd be, it's so flat. And I decided to do them during the day. So I'd have that energy level up. So, man, I can only imagine maintaining that. I'm, that's a 10 minute long video. I can only imagine exactly. maintaining that throughout the day. That's amazing. So now, now I just think, what would Angela Lansbury do? <laughs> She'd get up and do the show. She's a trooper. That's show people. I gotta That's put what that we up. are. I'm putting that on a, on a post-it on my monitor. What would Angela yeah. Lansbury do? The show must go on, says Angela Lansbury. All right, so <laughs> we have a Widom's World? Yeah, there's a short little Widom's World, and I'll, I'll preface it by saying this is a little video I show people when they're looking at, to get a stack created for Twisted Wave. And basically what a stack is, is when you have a, a set of processing settings pre-programmed that you can recall and use whenever you want. Not just one plugin, but you can have multiple plugins in one stack. And in mm-hmm. the world of uh, um, Adobe Audition that John works in, they call it a rack. Um, and yeah. I can send a stack file. And, and this is the process of how you set up a stack or how you install a stack file. And then we'll go a little, talk a little bit more about what these stacks are, what they do, and whether you should get one. And so if coming up, one. this is steaming stacks and nice racks. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Joel Whittem from Whittem's World. I want to show you how to load a file into your stack for Twisted Wave. So all you Twisted Wave users who need to understand how to take a stack file and load it into your system, this is for you, okay? So we'll call this a special edition. Uh, this process is not that difficult, but it's just explaining it can be difficult. So I'm going to show you visually on screen what I'm doing here. So in Twisted Wave, you've got the effects menu and you've got the stacks function. And most of you may not have any stacks unless you've already worked with me. But if you haven't or nobody's ever sent you a stack, in the effects stacks menu, you'll see new effects stack. And that's it. You won't see any of this other stuff that I have. Click new effects stack. And that will open the effects stack window. Now there should be nothing here. Um, Now the file I'm going to send you needs to be installed so that it'll show up as a stack. But you can only do that by getting to a folder in the operating system, a a finder folder. So there's a shortcut to find that folder because it's buried down into the system pretty hard, pretty deep. So we'll go to stacks and then we'll bring up manage stacks. All that's going to do now is open this special hidden folder in your uh, in your operating system so you'll see this folder come up and it should just show stacks just like this and probably nothing inside if you've never added any stacks okay so you should just see stacks now my stacks has stuff in it obviously so the file that i would send you by email or that will show up in a folder with other files so you may get a folder from sugar sync um, that i use to send files And inside it, you'll look for files that say .stack at the end. You should see something like timbaudition.stack. All you're going to do is take those files I've sent you, download them to your desktop, and click and drag them into this folder. Okay, so if this file is on the desktop or in my downloads folder, I would just simply click and drag and drop the .stack file into the stacks folder. See, now it's in the Stacks folder. Now your stack is installed in Twisted Wave. So now that I want to work with that audio file, that stack, I can go to Effects, Effects Stack, and now it will show up in this menu over here. I have mine in submenus. You can do all that within the Finder if you like. You can make subfolders and and all that. But I've got mine here, and I can just load a... Uh, 
stack anytime I want and there it is it loads right up and all the effects that I preloaded for that project show up in the effects stack okay so that's that's how you load an effects stack so if you have any trouble with this please do let me know and if you have suggestions for future little tutorials on, on anything audio, please send an email to widomsworld at edgestudio.com and I'll be happy to address it. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you. I mean, yeah, that's that's a topic that we really want to talk about. In fact, while while John and I were chatting off the air here, we realized that Jeff has a lot to offer on this topic too. So we're going to bring Jeff Berlin on this in in on this too. Um, but man, John, tell me how many times you've done a a spot where you've realized that if you don't do some processing on that audio before you send it out, that it's probably going to go to air with basically flat. I mean, does that happen to you from time to time or more often yeah, than ever? Yeah, sure. Uh, especially when it's like the last second it has to get on. And it, and it, it depends on the person on the other end, how proficient they are at, at uh, you know, working with audio. A lot, of, a lot of people are like really good at video and then they just kind of drop the audio and make it louder. And, uh, and they don't know like all the finer points of, of how to mix something in. Yeah, and, well, I, I I feel remiss. I didn't really bookend that video very well, but now I want to say that in regards to the Twisted Wave stack thing, now mm -hmm. instead of having to go through as many steps, if you've upgraded Pro, uh, Twisted Wave to the newest version, one point twelve or newer, they've made it so easy to install a stack now. You just double click on the stack file after you've downloaded it from whomever sent it to you, and it says I've installed the stack. Done. It's in the system. And I so wish Adobe Audition would um, adopt such an easy way of, of sharing rack settings between users. Um, the only way I know how to do it on Adobe Audition is to put the rack into a track in a multi-track session, send the entire multi-track session to somebody else, and then yep. they can load that rack, save it to their racks. But that's you kind of have to jump all those fiery hoops to do that. John, have you found an easier way to do it, or have you even bothered to, to? Have you ever have you ever shared racks with anybody else? Have you ever done that? No, no, yeah. I have never shared my racks or my stacks <laughs> with anybody else. Those are trade secrets, and I don't give them out. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. But some people, no, um, some people get in a I, sharing I, mood sometimes. They do that. Oh, absolutely. I I would share because it would be on somebody else's voice in somebody else's room, and and, and it might not work the same way. Exactly. I mean, and that's the, that's the key. You know, there are people listening saying stacks, racks. What are you talking about? Well, if you're one of those people, don't be embarrassed. You don't have to know all of this stuff. You can no. actually buy them from George. George has, uh, and he will design them to your voice and your room. Um, and that's a great service because, uh, frankly, when it comes right down to it, my um, proficiency in processing has basically been through a series of blunders and lucky stabs. <laughs> I don't know what any of this stuff means or what it does, but it uh, just uh, it's the sound better button. And I, I admit that same thing for me, but I've done it a couple, you know, probably for a thousand people. So yeah. I look back at stacks that I made because I save everything, right? And I've looked at yeah. stacks that I made for somebody five, three, four years ago. And I was like, Ugh, what, what the was I thinking with that EQ, you know? And so I get better as over time too. Um, but Jeff, I want to bring you in on this. Um, Jeff, you, we'll we'll talk more about your your gear and your your workflow and what you do as a producer. But are you finding this to be true as well? Are you doing a lot of processing on files, and do you know when you need to do the processing ahead of time, or is it just luck of the draw? Uh, I'll talk to the producer and find out what they want. A, a very astute producer who knows how to process the voice will be very angry if you process. They want completely dry tracks, uh, and I understand that. Uh, you have other producers who think they know more than they actually do. And then the final product, you hear it, and your voice may not print quite as well as the voice that was on before and after yours. Uh, so for that, you, if you add a little bit of processing, you're creating a bit of an insurance policy that, that uh, the voice will sound good in, in the final mix. Uh, so yeah, I, I do always add some processing, just a little bit of compression, if nothing else. Yeah, um, But I'll, I'll go up into crazy stages. It's different for radio than it is for TV sure. as well. Can you share what you do with radio? Because I 
that blew me away when I was over at your house uh, this summer and I popped in and you showed me how you uh, do a recording or would you rather not? Uh, I'll, no, I'll gladly. I mean, uh, it's, it's very complex. Uh, it's, well, I mean, I do it. You, you do how many recordings simultaneously when, when you record? Usually six. He's recording six separate tracks, the same thing, at but the same time. at the same time, simultaneously. And each one is a different processing and they, and you just batch, save them and send them. Yeah. It takes me no more time than it does to record one track. So each radio station that is a client of Jeff gets the same, you know, session for the, the, the promo or the sweepers or the liners, and they get it in six different, um, you know, individual distinct sounds. Six different settings. There's one that's fairly clean. It still has some, some sweetening, but not much. There's one that's like movie trailer, really big sounding. There's one that's just filtered and that's very popular. Uh, there's another one that's like filtered and distorted and dirty. And that's for specific clients who like that setting and they want to use it. So I include it. And then there's one that's distorted. Uh, and then there's one that's extremely filtered and compressed and just, you know, cuts through. And that was, each one was really created for a specific client. But I find the different stations that, that, uh, that I'm on like different ones. And they can all be stacked, too. If you mix them all together, there'll be no uh, I've compensated for the latency. So it gives you uh, an infinite number of variations on how to keep the voice interesting and dynamic for uh, you know, a flamethrowing radio promo. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I had no idea that that was even done. And, and then so, I use macros to rename them and upload them and then create the email with direct links to each file. So they can just click on the one that they like or as many as they like. I try to make it as easy and as non-intrusive as possible. Oh, wow. <sighs> so you really are, you're, you're letting them decide which of those six they want to use. You're really well, giving them the all same, six? It's the same acting. No, I know. But I, I mean, you're, I'm sure you don't do it for everybody, right? Because some of them would go, this is information overload, right? Uh, some stations, like for instance, Miles uh, at Kiss in Cleveland only wants my combo setting. There's a few that only want specific settings that I send, and I, I'll yeah. just send them that if that's all they're going to use. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but if it's a station where you're not as familiar with them, or had they just become spoiled, <laughs> for lack of a better word, uh, that you've given them this many choices and now they expect it. A little bit of both? Um, no, I spoil them. Absolutely. Yeah. Spoil them. Spoil the heck out of your clients, everybody. Uh, I mean, if you'd like, I'll share with you the underlying philosophy behind processing your voice uh, yeah. that I learned when I was a radio producer. Yeah. Uh, and it, um, I can't really name the voice person I was working with, but he was having a bad day. Uh -huh. And uh, it might have been like a 30-minute long reel of tape uh, to get a 30-second promo out. And I spent hours with splicing tape. This is before digital audio workstations. And, <laughs> and there was a splice for every syllable. I spliced it together. He oh could not God. get through the copy. He couldn't. And then my boss was Steve Rivers. And he came in and he, had, he wanted to listen to everything. That went in. So I played it for him. And uh, his response was like, wow, what a great read. <laughs> and I'm like, that was not his read. I was a, you know. So what I learned was when it sounds really good, the voice guy gets the credit. Not the production guy, even if it is the genius of the production person behind the scenes who made that voice track pop and made it swim and put together all the elements around it. It's the voice that is the star of the show and gets all the credit by the person who has decided to hire you as the voice. Conversely, if the voice sounds terrible because the producer was an idiot and didn't know how to make it, you know, the voice guy will get blamed. So by processing the voice, you're ensuring that even if the producer is completely incompetent, that there'll be some level of clarity and and. Like print. I mean, the voice will still cut through even if the music makes his way off. And the person who decided to put you on as the voice will still be satisfied with your work. Despite and get to keep their job another day. Right. You just want, I, it, it's just about longevity. You want to keep the gig for as long as possible. And a little bit of processing can help ensure that that's the case in the face of a production person who may not have the time or the interest or the wherewithal. Production is one of those things. It's like a pen and a paper that you're going to get completely wildly different results from every person who puts the pen to paper, I think. Have you ever worked thing. with somebody that was that like the track was so bad that you've actually had to go back in and record certain consonants? <laughs> I've done that. Like yeah, I've done that. A, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And put in a buh or a puh or a s. Well, the worst was if we changed our positioning statement, Ernie Anderson was the voice and he was, he'd passed on because we were still using him for a while after you. So I'd have to go and like do my best Ernie impersonation and people couldn't tell. I was like really flattered about that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You actually got to work with some of the icons of, uh, of, of promo 
Uh, you got to work with Ernie and uh, and Don LaFontaine. Save save it for after the break. Ooh, that's yes, a tease. We need a tease, man. We need a tease. But I know okay, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff has worked with some some heavy hitters and uh, one guy who was pretty close to me, Don LaFontaine. So I'd love to want to get some stories from Jeff and hear a little bit more about how the heck he got himself into this world and why he likes doing it and what he does and all that cool stuff <laughs> right after this short break. Thanks for everybody watching. We'll be right back. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the East West Audio Body Shop. Ah! Snails like it too. And we're back. We're here with Jeff Berlin uh, and John Taylor. Both. Now, we should probably say who Jeff is for those who uh, uh, yes. didn't get like, the, the full rundown. Jeff, how many uh, stations are you the imaging voice for now? Uh, at least 100. Yeah. I, I and, and, and you're the, uh, the promo voice for A&E? Yeah, that's, uh, I am, but not much longer. The sun oh. is setting on that one? Yeah. I mean, I've been the main promo voice for the past five years. Uh, but there's a rebrand going on, so. Mm. But it's a but it's a good run though, you know. That's what you got to yeah, look at it that way. That's how you got to look at it, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like it, things change all the time, and that's the only thing that's constant in this yeah, I just, business. I, I just want to tell everybody I'm the voice, and you're going to tune it in tonight, and you'll hear someone else doing the promos that I used to do. Um, well, I think you were the I'm, best. Thank you. We'll see. Yeah. And you know, it's an open-ended thing. It may not be over. I'm not sure, but. Well, there's no there's no contracts for any of this stuff, right? You are, Nothing and then you are. aren't. Uh, for for my TV stuff, yeah, it's for, all uh, case by case. Yeah, for everybody, it's, I think right? it's amazing. Yeah, because we had well, Town, we had, it, we had Towns and Coleman on last week. John, you yeah. love Townie. Yeah, we I talked about he was the you know the must musty TV NBC voice. He said he kind of lucked into it, and then they did it for a little while, and they're like, yeah, just keep doing that. And he, well, how long did he do that? Sixteen years, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, but there's he said no, it was not a contract. <laughs> it blows my <laughs> mind. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and I think that the world has gotten because of, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the, the way things move so fast, uh, it's, it's, it's even more tenuous. So you have to be flexible. And this is a, a question that I wanted to ask you, Jeff, because I've, I've witnessed you do marathon sessions where you've got to maintain this excruciatingly high energy for one station after another, how do you, how do you um, keep that energy going, uh, you know, and, and run that marathon? Because I, I get tired. Music. Really? Yeah, I have music playing in my headphones when I read. When you read, really? Yeah, not always. You know, it, it depends. And sometimes I'll read it and I'll turn the music off and read it again. So I get really familiar with the copy. But I have two FM tuners tuned to different radio stations. One's like hip hop, the other, and that'll be rock or CHR. And then obviously on my computer, I can put on whatever I want. But I have music playing like a lot. Um, That's so fascinating. I mean, if I've got a huge session coming up, a really important session, and I'm, I've been going all day and I'm exhausted, you know, a 10 minute nap, 
Uh, sometimes yeah. it's like you drink a cup of coffee and then take a nap. And when, when you wake up, it's like, yes. And then you're ready back for more. Uh, and bike rides too. I live next to a huge section of woods and uh, I got a dog. So I'll go out 20 minutes on the bike ride. I'll, uh, on, I'll climb these like killer hills that put you in cardiac arrest territory. And when you come back, boom, I'm ready to go. So nice. Yeah, well, that'll, that won't work for me because I live an utterly sedentary life with no physical activity whatsoever. But yeah, uh, the coffee, I like that. And the nap. I'll, That's I'll, to say, well, you, take a, you drink the coffee and then you take a nap. <laughs> and then when you wake up, the caffeine's kicking in and then you're like, yes, let's go. This is reading. Ride the snake. Coffee nap. Ride the snake. Coffee nap. Coffee nap. Now, um, <laughs> let's John, talk. Uh, John, will you tell us a little bit more about Jeff? Uh, well, you know him so well. I mean, Jeff, is it voice first, radio second, producing? What, 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 what order did all this come together for you? And then John, uh, John, take over. Oh, am I answering the question? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, music. It started with music. I'm a music nut. I love my weird, bizarre music. And I did when I was in high school and I was ostracized for it. So I got on college radio and then that led to a professional gig. And I was just like, what, what do I want to go for this professional? It was WAF and they played Led Zeppelin and Foreigner. Like that's awful music. I like my weird stuff. Just go for the gig, you know? And so then I <laughs> became a DJ there for seven years and found that while I was there, I would do my four hour air shift and then spent eight hours in the production studio doing weird bits and, you know, theater of the mind stuff. And, and I became the station voice when I was like 20 uh, and, and did all of their imaging, the station imaging uh, while I was DJ there. And then um, the, the other thing was I noticed uh, when I was a DJ on WCOZ, there was an opening for an on-air position and we got 1,000 tapes. A thousand people applied for this on-air position. Then there was a production opening and eight people applied. I thought, you know, hmm. this is back when MTV was starting to change the game and production, the, the production values of every media outlet be, uh, was suddenly placed at a much higher value than it had been before. And there were very few uh, people who had the skills needed to implement that. So I thought, I'll take advantage of this. And so I took, I got a job at KISS 108 and worked there for 22 years. So I was the creative services director at KISS 108 in Boston, which uh, for a lot of that period was the third most listened to top 40 radio station in America behind Z100 in New York and KISS in LA, which was- And, and basically it was the first KISS and there are KISSes all over the country. Yeah. You know, I mean, KISS was, was a template that, that a lot of companies copied uh, and you worked with some of the best. In fact, we just, uh, uh, said farewell to uh, one of the greatest uh, radio DJs of, of all yeah. time, Dale yeah. Dorman, who you got to work with. And he was one of those boss jocks from the old RKO chain, uh, people that came up in the 60s. And he was a top 40 jock for close to 40 years on the radio in Boston. So. He, he worked at KF, KFRC in San Francisco for a while too, I think. Uh, but yeah, no, I worked very closely with him. I was right across the hall and we had what I like to call a telepathic working relationship where I knew what he, what he wanted. He would just make a gesture and it's like, all right, boom, boom, and I'd get him whatever he needed. Wow. Um, but when you're doing creative services, I, it was also cracking the mic a lot to voice commercials. And then friends of mine wanted me to image their radio stations and that just led to it. And uh, it, it, I could give you all the details, but uh, um, it, this is basically working for friends and uh, it would lead to gigs and gigs would lead to other gigs and consultants would like your work and then put you on 14 more stations. And then I got an agent and boom, here I am. There you go. That's it. That That's quick, all I got. It? Thanks Jeff. <laughs> well, well all right, let's move on now. <laughs> no, I mean, it, that, that's called cultivating your network. And now, you know, we do it in a much different way with social media, but I mean, that is, that's, he started in an industry, then created friends in the industry. Then the friends that he created in the industry created a work for Jeff. How about that? And he had fun doing it the whole way. See, that's the key. Like he was having a good time doing all of this and was an Uber geek. And you were always like ahead of the curve on, on technology. And like what now the latest piece of technology is the Comrex. Uh, uh, Comrex well, I don't know if that's the latest. Piece well, it's not the latest, but that's, that's the, the one we wanted to talk about because that's, that's kind of a, a cool little box. Yeah. So I'll preface this by saying that you guys, many of you know, what source connect is we've all talked about it a lot. I've worked with the guys at source connect as a, you know, just sort of consultant un informally, you know, with just how to make it a better product for a long time. So, you guys have all heard of it, you know. You know, you know what you know what IPDTL is now. You know what ISDN is and what it does. This is another alternate technology that competes or replaces all of these, right, Jeff? So, what do you? Let using? me say one thing. The reason I got the Comrex Bricklink is because it will talk to Lucy Live. 
Oh. So if you get Lucy Live on your smartphone, you can get it on to your Comrex Bricklink and, and you know, so with an iPhone, you could be doing a voiceover session from anywhere. Who was the first one in the room that got a Lucy Live? Yes, yes you're the one who told me about that. John. I can't believe that I found a piece of technology sooner than Jeff Berlin. <laughs> you were doing I your radio arrived. show. You were doing your radio show from across the continent. You were talking up records. I mean, you, you'd hear the song in your headphones and you would talk it up like a top 40 DJ, all using Lucy Live. Very impressive. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's and the fact that it can talk to the uh, Comrex uh, Bricklink or the access in the rack of the radio station is amazing, and and you can do it. You know, I I think I was doing it on uh, the four uh, G LTE Verizon network. Oh, yeah. Wow. So what, yeah. so what makes that so amazing, you guys, is you know I, I like to I like to distill this to people that don't know what this world's about, but basically with Lucy Live, you can connect to a piece of equipment in a radio station, whereas with Source Connect. There has to be a computer at both ends that's running the software and they have to be configured correctly and all this stuff. But with, with, with uh, Lucy Live, it'll run on a, on a tablet, a, an iPhone, an Android, just about anything, desktop, and it will then talk to this box called a Comrex Access. It'll also work with a Telos um, Zip 1 and some other Zip hardware. IP, ZIP or something. Yeah, yeah. So it works with a lot of different pieces of gear. So... It's pretty amazing because it bridges that gap, and the software itself for the user is pretty cheap, like two fifty, three hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah, and actually, there's like a a, a light version that's that's like fifty bucks. Yeah, hey, there's so a guy wearing a top hat with a <laughs> looks like a large mustache. Who's that that's, guy? That's it's, it's Dan Leonard. Is it is it Professor Harold Higgins? Dan, is your mic on? <laughs> yeah, my, I, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. No, I'm here at the Riviera Theater in Tonawanda, New York. I'm playing Mayor Shin in the music ah. band. So that's that's what this is for. And you and, and we're actually in rehearsals right now, so you can actually hear the the singing Light of Rose if you want here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god. Got a little got a little uh barbershop quartet going on there. <laughs> so Dan, Dan, say hi to Jeff. Hi there. Hi, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous. I feel fabulous. No, we're having a great time. And I figured I'd just cut in because there's never a time when I'm doing, when I, if I can't do EWAPs that I can't do EWAPs. So I thought I'd just drop in, but we're doing our, our final dress rehearsals tonight. And we're glad that you're on here. It uh, sounds like it's been a great show. And, uh, and I, everybody having a good time there we're, without we're, me? We're, we're oh, totally, yeah. We're geeking. Oh, okay, it. great. Yeah, we're geeking no, it's, way it's out. going okay. It's, I mean, it's not as good as Tonawanda, but they got trouble right there in Tonawanda. Oh, there's lots of it, as a matter of fact. This is actually a gorgeous theater. I, I wish I could show you in the light what it looks like. It's been restored. This was built in 1928 uh, as a vaudeville house, and they've restored it. This, this is the lobby, if you can, you can see what goes oh, wow. on in here. Oh, yeah. It's just a beautiful old theater, and, uh, you know, it's being restored, and... Uh, of course, I was the MC of a band concert here last night too, and I almost did a header into the pit, which would have been rather disastrous. But there's a, <laughs> a, a pipe organ here, a, a Wurlitzer pipe organ that actually was built into the theater in 1928, and it still works, built by Wurlitzer, which is from Tonawanda. Of and, course, uh, and it's 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 been great. But I don't want to interfere too much. I just had to interrupt and say hi and. Well, people, Show up my costume. people in the chat room are saying break a leg, but it sounded like last night you almost did. I almost did. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been that would have been different. So, Just yeah, don't break your mustache. No, no, I don't. You'll, you'll notice it's a little darker than usual. But uh, yeah, very snively whiplash of you. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> yes. No. But this, this is this is a fun show to do, and I'm and I'm I'm having a great time doing it. But I will be back next week with hopefully some video. Excellent, awesome. man. Thanks for dropping right. in, man. <laughs> it was a blast seeing you there. All right. We'll see you later. See you, Dan. Back. <laughs> Live from the Tonawanda Playhouse. You never know who's going to jump in the feed. <laughs> awesome. But that's technology for you. I mean, it's amazing. You know, I you know. got a TV show with with people broadcasting from their uh, studios in, in two different places uh, across the continent. It's just bizarre. It's a blast, yeah. So, so I mean, Lucy, so, so, so Lucy Live, I explained that. Does Lucy also talk to the brick? 
Yes. yes. Oh, cool. Okay. That's specifically why I got it. Oh, wow. That's pretty there, weird. There are a lot of options for that. There's a lot of IP boxes out there now. Yeah. So the brick is a very simple, it's simple. To, it's a simple looking box because it has no interface on it, right? There's no. It's, control, it's controlled with the web interface only. Right. Exactly. And, and then there's there's dip switches. So you can change some settings. Like you can switch switch the input and go in AESCBU digitally or analog. Wow. That's pretty wicked, but it's also very cost effective, right? I mean, it's a lot less expensive than the access and a lot of Yeah, it's about thirteen hundred bucks. Well, I, I use it to bridge to my ISDN line and uh yeah. I don't do that many ISDN sessions. So a couple of friends of mine were having a lot of trouble getting ISDN. So there's three of us using my ISDN line on Cape Cod right now. All of them got brick links. I told them get a brick link and so now we all email each other, Hey, I got a session at four and it's it's working out great. So now economy of scale, I have one ISDN line, three of us are using it. It's brilliant, man. I, I, I know if other people have talked about wanting to do that, nobody's really executed it on it. Uh, but it's it's a very, very good idea to do that. And I think it's going to become more and more of, of an importance as ISDN continues to be more annoying to get, more expensive, less stable, the whole, the whole nine yards. I think we're the last two people on Cape Cod that have ISDN. I think you, that's true because Dave Morris couldn't get it in Falmouth when he shut down his operation. And I have to say, I've made a lot of money off my studio because I'm renting it out now to every voice person that's on vacation on Cape Cod. I'm the one they're going to now, which is a pain because I'm not always there. So I got to slip down there, but I charge for it. It's <laughs> fun. I get to meet some interesting people. No doubt. That's pretty, that's pretty good. I, very enterprising. I could do that here, but uh, well, actually, I almost considered doing that here because there is no voice actor rate, kind of actor's rate voiceover studio near the beach in Santa Monica or anywhere right. in this area that I'm aware of. Oh. There, there are lots of world-class yeah, Lime studios. is over there. Lime, yeah, great Vox, or no, Pop, Pop Sound. Pop. But I think Pop Sound is closed. Well, they closed and then they reopened. Oh, they reopened. I didn't know that. I and love that place. What's really weird is they closed and reopened without ISDN. What? Wow. Yeah. I once did a session at, at uh, P.O.P., and uh, I couldn't get into the studio that I was booked into because the previous session was going uh, long. And then uh, the guy who was in it came out. It was Ted Danson. No, no <laughs> and I sat on the stool and there was residual Ted Danson butt heat. <laughs> <laughs> You've never wiped after that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it's late. <laughs> it's sorry. late on the East Coast. I... I, 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 I f- I actually spoke to Ted Danson once about putting together a home studio for him, but uh, never cool. material. It never materialized. Yeah, wow. it was so funny because he and his wife, his wife at what Mary Steenbergen, yeah, Virgin, sure. yes, she's a musician. She's a songwriter in Nashville, and she goes down there half the year and does songwriting. So they wanted to put together a full blown studio. Have you been doing any uh, celeb home studios recently? Any Me? little name dropping? Any glamorous uh, installs lately? Um, no. That you can say? No, no, not, not really any, not, nothing that really stands out. Yeah. You haven't been uh, doing any tweaks of celebrities? Celebrity tweaks? Yeah. <laughs> celebrity Tweaking tweak of the studio, week. celeb studios? <laughs> not, not like world household names, that's for sure. But celebs in our world, you know, freaking amazing Absolutely. people that I work with. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've known and I've spoken to Chris Corley many times, but I'm getting to work at Chris Corley's studio. Uh, He's got a nice room. I've I've hung out with him a lot. Yeah, too. I mean, he showed me some photos and a video of that studio. studio so it has a bathroom. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. and it has. And a he nice... has to close the door because otherwise you can hear the reverberation from the tile. Exactly. So. Oh yeah, my bathroom has a studio. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to tell her to leave. <laughs> Oh, did Ella come back? Yeah, she did. She's sneaking around my bo- my studio right now. If you want, I'll get my kid up here, and Ella can talk to my dog. Oh, okay. We can have a whole sideshow going. <laughs> um, I, I took it as the highest compliment. I went to Jeff's house, and uh, and his daughter Katie, as I was leaving, said, uh, "What did he, she said to your wife or something? He he should come here more often, or <laughs> something like." That. Loved you. You were so funny. You well, told we had a blast. Your daughter's awesome. Yeah, I wanted to do voice work. She's actually very compelling on on microphone. She like I, I had her cut a, a an audition. There was an audition for a movie trailer, and I had her do it too. And I thought these guys were geniuses. They put her on. Can you imagine like a, a ten year old going in a world? You know, like doing that deep. And she oh yeah, she and she's, off with little she's extremely articulate in a world or whatever. Because well, I've been 
sticking a microphone in front of her since she was two. So um. exactly, I've been doing the same thing with Ella. I'm I'm priming her for that day when I decide to finally get her an audition, <laughs> or, or at right, least get her some coaching. Get in the booth. You got to exactly. make your daddy's daddy's little annuity. <laughs> Damn straight, man. You're my 401k. Yeah, your, own, your own college kid. Come on. <laughs> you kidding me? Preschool here is expensive. There is a lot of there are a lot of people that that have offspring that that do you know voice work. I know uh, Roger Lapardi's son is uh, you know tearing things up, and you know uh, I don't have any kids uh, or talented pets for that matter. But uh, you know it, you know you learn by by watching, and uh, they're little sponges. That's they're right, absorbing man. everything. So um, I want to hear. I want to hear before we go to another break because we have a bunch of audience questions. But oh, cool! But John, I wanted. I wanted to. I know you got some stuff to talk about too. I just wanted to hear a little bit about one little good one about Ernie Anderson and one little good one about Don LaFontaine because you've directed both of these guys, two no longer living legends. Um, sadly to say, but um, icons, icons. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't really have any stories. They were just routine sessions for the most part. <laughs> You're just doing your job. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, and I learned working for these guys because this was before I'd really hit my stride in voiceover. I was doing voiceover too, but yeah. um, I, was, I was producer. My role was as producer. Um, all I know is uh, my boss, Steve Rivers, uh, delegated the task of directing Ernie for the voiceover session to me. Uh, because Ernie would rip him a new one. Uh, he'd go, <laughs> why don't you do that? He wouldn't take any direction. Ernie was absolutely cantankerous. Like, yeah. um, w- wouldn't, wouldn't voice it. Like, you know, he he'd eventually would do it, but he'd be like, why don't you do this with your thousand watt voice? You know, and <laughs> Rivers, uh-huh. the, he programmed Kiss in LA. He was like one of the net, the nation's top programmers. He's not used to getting any grief from anybody. And here Ernie's giving it to him. So it's like, you, you direct him next time. So I get on, hi, hello, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hello, how are you? And uh, he'd read it, you know, like Boston's number one hit music station. And I'd be like, I, Ernie, you know, I don't hate to ask you this, but can you maybe say, try going Boston's number one hit music station? And it's like, sure. And he would just do it. And, you know, he, he would take my suggestion. He took and, your line reads and he ran with it? He did. I think at one point I actually had him parrot an inflection. I'd, like I'd try reading, you know, in, emphasizing this word instead of that. And he just did it. And he was great. Do you do you get annoyed if somebody gives you a line read? I never do. No, I, I don't. hear that. It's it's rumored that people do this. I, I, who, give you line reads or no no get no get annoyed when they receive a line read. Uh, well, I want to know who does so I can go after all their clients because they're like <laughs> they're going to yeah. be difficult to work with. You know, well yeah. actors actors in an acting performance are supposed to if they're being directed correctly are supposed to be able to bring their own you know their own bag of tricks to the role right right in an acting situation so um, are they going to belittle the director who may not be as competent as they are if they're not no yeah, yeah. if somebody said you know i can be a parrot if some if if and sometimes yeah they're not sometimes people are not really good at uh conveying what they want to hear right and so i think a lot of people are are coaching or directing for the very first time in their career and even if you've been doing it for a long long time so now it's your job to help them learn how to do the job and, and be as accommodating as possible and as friendly as possible and making it as easy for them as possible. That's and make it fun. Them. Yeah, yeah, it should oh, be yeah. fun for them. And then if they're open to collaboration, like suggest, hey, what if I did it this way? Oh, yeah. And so you never know. There's always a chemistry and a synergy, I think. Yeah. And then you got to direct Don LaFontaine. Yeah, he came after Ernie because uh, Ernie had passed on. Um I, the, no stories at all. Don was just yeah. a total pro. He just a total on, pro. He, he, he's on. Nailed the he's, lines he's in, and, and went on to his next session. One thing I was told about Don LaFontaine is he will always sound like his last session. So if he was just voicing a movie trailer, he's going to get on. And be like you know, And if he was just voicing something more upbeat, he'll be upbeat. So you have to kind of you know, get him to into the zone you want him to be in mm-hmm. for, for your stuff. Uh, but he got there very quickly. He was awesome. Oh man, I yeah, I got to work with him pretty, you know, one on one for quite a while as his as his techie guy, and so I'd I'd see him in his booth doing those sessions and hearing the direction and hearing his reaction to the direction and things like that. So I got a little taste of what it was like, you know, to be that guy and working with a twenty two year old director who was probably scared shitless that they were going <laughs> to yeah. blow this with Don, and they're just covering. CYA man, you know, covering their bases, you know, and, yeah. you know, and I, I will dare say that I maybe ever heard Dan Don say one time 
you know, something like, uh, I, I think you already got that. I think you already got it or something like that, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. maybe one time, you know, and, uh, but he was always just, you know, whatever it takes, whatever you need, whatever you, whatever you got to do. He was to- total pro. And because he was such a total pro, it took me so long to get to really know him because even when I was there and in his space and working in his studio for sometimes hours a day, he he wasn't like an overly huggy, warm kind of guy, you know, like, but we got to know each other really well. And in the last six months that he was around, he and I became really close. Um, and I was so, just the irony that I'd become so close to this man and we'd had so many things to do together in the future. And then he, he would be ripped from the planet. But um, anyway, yeah. just because it's cool to hear of someone that, that actually was on the other side of that glass with him and in doing that. Um. Cool. Well, with that, John, do you want to do anything else before we jump to another break? And then we'll come back and take questions and talk more because there's a lot. Yeah, I think we should have the questions uh, come in next. But I I just wanted to say um, there was another great loss to the radio community nationwide this uh, past week when Tom Maliachi uh, passed away from uh, Mm. Car Talk. Mm. And and I think that that, sh- that show has a lot of poignance to us because it, it started up in the Boston area. Uh, yeah. And, and a lot, it, it was kind of like a, a, a show that, that was kind of like the background of our whole lives mm-hmm. over 30 it, it years. It was a groundbreaking show, I think, too. Yeah. And it has some, some influences, including this show. Oh, yeah. You kidding me? I mean, that, that's the, the reason this show exists. There's two main influences, and Car Talk is absolutely the top. The second is twit.tv, which is a, a video podcasting network about technology that I love. But it was Car Talk that created that. That was the Dan and I were sitting here doing what we do on the show, but doing it on Skype for fun, you know? And we're like, this is like Car Talk. Maybe <laughs> so people you, would you tell me that non voiceover people are tuning into this podcast. Like, would my mother want to? <laughs> yeah, I don't think your mom would. I don't think that the, my mom NPR is going to be knocking on the door. <laughs> my I'm mom's here. So, you're sick. What? My mom's here. Mary Whittam's in the chat room right there. Mary Whittam. That's my Hi, mom. <laughs> She's in Mary there. would She would come and visit you in prison. <laughs> it's not the same. Ma. I love you, Mary. But mom, if you come see me in prison, make sure you hide a file in the kick. Um, <laughs> But no, I, I uh, no, we owe a lot to those guys and and Tom and and uh, we miss. It's very sad that he's gone. But uh, wow, what a, that was groundbreaking radio. John, you said I I, I assumed that they pre recorded. I'm sure they oh. pre recorded later in life. But were they doing that really live for a long time? Well, yeah, they did oh, it yeah. really live. But the way they did it was, if you wanted to get on the show, you had to call their toll free number. Mm-hmm. And you and and you would call the number, and they would ask you in, in, to record a message. And in the message, you had to talk about yourself and the problem of your car. And basically, they got to choose through those uh, phone messages who is a good storyteller, who's interesting, who's compelling, who has a car problem that we haven't dealt with recently. Right. And and so they would then call the person at home live when they did the show. But they, they had kind of a pre-interview and an audition for the call on their machine. Well, and I we, thought that that was a brilliant way to get good We, we basically out. did that the first couple episodes out of the gate. We had, pre, we had callers pre-lined up. Mm-hmm. John, were you one of them? Did we get it could you? Could have been. <laughs> and we, and we, try, we really did try to emulate what Car Talk was doing. And it, it did work, but it takes a lot of work. It's a huge amount of work to get all those people call in and, and to keep the topics fresh is, is very uh, challenging, um, especially when we were covering such a narrow band of topics. What microphone? Uh, what USB interface? You know, so, um, but yeah, we miss those guys. And uh, thanks for bringing it up, John. All right. So we're going to take a break and then come back with uh, questions from the chat room. You got it. Be right back.
We all agree that iTunes is one of the best ways to listen to music. Well, what if your voiceover demos could be presented the exact same way? Each clip inside your demo is listed as a clickable, playable track. Well, now you can, if your demo is presented with the interactive demo player only from VoiceSam. In VoiceSam, each track inside your demo is clearly titled for producers to view, select, and play. Now, we all know that producers will only listen to the first few tracks of your demos, right? But not on VoiceSam. With VoiceSam, producers can interact with your demo, clicking on what they want to hear. They'll stay longer, listening to all your voice work because they want to. Plus, with VoiceSam's exclusive Zamtistics, you'll know exactly what they listen to, when, and for how long. So why not give producers a chance to hear all your voice work with VoiceSam? Go to VoiceSam.com and sign up now. Plus, get an exclusive 45-day trial when you use the promo code EWABS. We all agree that I... And now, back to East West Audio Body Shop, where every week, it's Apollo 13. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. It's uh, John Taylor in the East. And uh, we have to do uh, a quick uh, little mention for Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. That's right. Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. I mean, you guys have known, you, you guys, if you're a regular viewer of the show, you, you certainly know all about what Harlan's product line is all about but really it's it's really an amazing safe place if you want to call it that for finding exactly what you need in your home studio i mean if he has it on the website it's because it's proven in his own usage to be a great product for for voiceover and something that's going to do the job that you bought it for so it really it's a great place to find stuff that you need in a home studio without um, getting stuck in the quagmire of, as Dan likes to put it, Banjo Emporium. Um, you know, and, and if you don't have a great local audio retailer that you can really trust to give you great recommendations, and I know Jeff mentioned one that he's worked with over the years from his hometown, if you don't have that, this is a really great resource for you guys to find the right products. And he's got some of his own. I mean, he's got the Porta Booth Plus for working um when you're on the road and you just want to have that consistent uh little portable space that you can bring with you um he's going to be announcing or he's pre-taking pre-orders on this uh this Centrance mixer face which yeah. uh is pretty Ooh. cool i mean we're all waiting for this thing it's, it's i'm waiting under, for mine to be delivered yeah it's been under a lot of revisions debugging and it's made overseas, so there's a lot of extra work to make sure that when it shows up on your doorstep, it is really what you ordered. And um, so I think we're still waiting on a delivery date on this thing. A lot of us are really anxious to get this thing. Um, but he's taking pre-orders for the mixer face, which is, for, for those that don't know, it's just a very base, well, simple and compact audio interface that will work with an iPhone, an I t a tablet, uh, a laptop computer, whatever. Um, but it's self-contained, self-powered with batteries, so you can carry it with you um, and never have to worry about being plugged into power. And you can plug professional uh, condenser microphones, two of them if you want, uh, into this unit. And it's got proper headphone monitoring. It's got even uh, limiting, which anybody that knows, you know, recording stuff on the fly, ah, dang it, I clipped on that take. You know, I, mm -hmm. I did clipped on that take. If you have the limiter engaged, you don't have to worry about clipping. It does a really good job. So this thing is going to be amazing. So this is probably the place where you want to get one because when they're available, um, Harlan knows the guys from Centrance really well, and he's going to be very knowledgeable on the use of this product. So it's a great location to go. You can't go wrong with uh, shopping there. He's got a great return policy. Uh, he lets you try stuff for, I believe it's up to 60 days. Um, so quite remarkable. So can't go wrong voiceoveressentials.com and if you want to let them know that you've came through if you came to see him through us do us an extra little favor we do have an affiliate link at the bottom of the page it doesn't uh make us any more money but it just lets harlan know that you came to see him through our website so go ahead and click that little porta booth link at the lower left corner of our website when you go to visit voiceover essentials that way harlan knows where you came from so anyway voiceover essentials Thanks a, thanks a ton, uh, Harlan, for being there from literally from episode 
one. He's supported this show. All right, so we Great have guy. questions. We do, tons of them. From the mailbag. Let's do it. That reminds that makes me think we we need we need a bumper or we need a drop. What do we call it? A drop? Of yeah, the intro? You need like a, a, yeah, you need an intro. We need, you need a, a stager. A stager. stager. Uh, that's it. We need stagers. Or sweeper, it depends. Sweepers. These are these are radio terms, I think. I know, but this is basically a radio show, it just has webcams. So we're we're trying to go for that. Anyway. What do we got, John? Oh, I don't know. You're on the site. I oh, don't that's see right. You're not, looking at the, you're not looking at the show. No, I'm, I'm just lost in the wonder of it all. I was looking at Harlan Hogan's Porta Booth. <laughs> cool, I man. I have one right here. Yeah. All right, let, let me dig in here. First question is from Anthony. We'll dig right into the geekdom because Anthony loves tech too. Anthony, is it Anthony, Anthony who? I think that's Anthony Gettig. Oh, Because okay. he's the one that actually mans the chat room and puts the questions in there. So, What's the question, Anthony? He says... What's the chain and what DAW? So obviously this is for you, Jeff. So what, what is your audio chain from mic to computer and what is your preferred DAW for doing your voice work? Okay. Uh, I, I didn't hear every single word you just said. But, uh, Basically, we want to know what you what use, chain? your gear and your audio software, your DAW. Okay. Uh, I use Pro Tools. Um, it's uh, right now here at this studio, I have a 416 shotgun mic, the Sennheiser. I have an Avalon M5 mic pre. I could even turn the computer around and show it to you, but that would probably be awkward. Uh, <laughs> the Avalon M5 then goes into a Valley 400, which Chris Corley will regale the glory of the Valley 400. Uh, and this one happens to sound pristine. They're vintage boxes. Yeah, so they're, no longer uh, made. No, uh, I have a couple of them. Uh, I also have... Uh, Yuri LA4s that I had reconditioned recently at Electronics. So those are the universal audio photoelectric compressors. Um, I'll go back and forth. The, the LA4s are a little less beefy than the Valley 400. So it depends on who the client is. I can switch them very quickly. Hmm. Uh, my analog digital converter is a Cranesong head. Um, and then that digitally goes out into a metric halo LIO8, which has... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so I've got two front ends before I go into my Pro Tools HD system, which is the uh, 190. You sorry you asked, <laughs> Anthony? Are you sorry you no, asked? No, he, he's loving so, it. I know. He's uh, have, have we tabulated? We're up to about seventy five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Uh, and then once it's in Pro Tools, it goes out. You know, gets. Uh, I'll, I know I've got a lot of outboard gear too, so I've got a a, 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 a a classic Aphex Expressor. So when I do those six settings I was talking about earlier, one of them actually goes out analog into the Aphex Expressor and then back into Pro Tools. And that's now, now you've won your, your engineering cred when you said that. <laughs> Everything else, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty pedestrian, pretty pedestrian. But when you're doing a loop out of the Digi 192 through an outboard, back into it, now, okay. Thank you. Now you've um, gained my, res my, my undying respect. <laughs> also, it's a, it's a mix of outboard and and plugins. So yeah, um, yeah, to to get the end result. Snellers and again, kids, all, don't try all this at home. Uh, I have <laughs> another studio on Cape Cod, which is a lot simpler. That's a, a Sound Deluxe U ninety nine is my mic there, and a Great River mic pre, also an LA four compressor. The A to D there is the Metric Halo Direct that goes directly into the ULN two, and, and he it, prints it all onto cassettes and sends them out. <laughs> <with FedEx. laughs> yeah, if you can make FedEx, the deadline there is two in the afternoon. So. <laughs> He's and, on the outer cape. Anthony said that is badass, and I have to agree. <laughs> um, J.S. Gilbert says, Jeff, tell the er Ernie Anderson Sennheiser 416 story. Do you know anything about oh. that story? Yeah. Uh, he used the Sennheiser, for, the Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic was not, never designed for voice work. It was designed for, uh, for on location, right? I mean, you would know this as well. Boom as work. Yeah. yeah, the end of a boom. Yeah, so you put it on a boom mic and you can record somebody at quite a distance and it, it rejects outward sound. And Ernie was famous. And I, I've, I've seen videos of Ernie voicing ABC promos in the control room, like where it's got to be like noisy and this chatter. And he's on a 416 reading like, on the next love boat. And it sounded great, you know. And so we're all just basically imitating what Ernie started. The best part of the story is why particularly that Ernie wanted to be in the control room and not in the booth. You know, Claustrophobia. You know, do you know that story? There's a lot of versions to that one. I heard claustrophobia. <laughs> Jeff, do you know? Uh, I, I may have heard it. Uh, you're going to have to. You... I, I think it had something to do with people. He didn't want people talking crap about him when he couldn't hear them. So he, <laughs> he, wanted, to be, he wanted to be right in the room so that nobody could 
talk <laughs> talk smack about. <laughs> That's what I heard. The fellow that yeah. told me that story also happens to be dead. So maybe we should be careful about how much we talk about this. But um, yeah. that was actually. Heard he did swear like a sailor, man. He just he wouldn't hesitate to let a lot of f bombs out. <laughs> let her rip. Yeah. yeah so he, the, he was not a kid friendly uh, voiceover guy. So Ernie was using a four, probably a four fifteen, maybe at the time, and now a four sixteen, and and um, then it just became wow, this mic works on Ernie. Let's stick it on this guy and that guy and that guy and this girl and all, you know, and it just became one of those go to mics. And the rest is history. I mean, there you go. I, I just started using one because everyone else was. I, I, you know, I wouldn't have discovered it on my own. So yeah, no, I, I, I talk to people to this day, especially in New York, engineers are like, what, For a four sixteen? Yeah, so yeah, it's, but I know that ABC Television required their announcers to use four sixteen microphones for a long time. I don't know if that's still the case. They may. But it was mandatory. Like you, it's you will use a four sixteen if you're doing our promos. ABC is very. I mean, they're the ones that they're the litmus test for my client studios, right? If they do work for ABC, I love to get ABC's seal of approval because oh, wow. they are really picky. Um, I, I even EQ'd one of my clients' channel strips because the, I don't like the sound of the 416 raw straight yeah. you know, out of the mic that much. And I'm notching out a little bit at 8K you know, because it's a little bit you know, harsh. And the engineer's like, what happened to that mic? <laughs> I'm like, uh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, an EQ. I'm like, oh, there's an EQ. Ah, bypass the EQ. Oh, sorry about that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and we want it straight. Um, David Bonal says, question for Jeff. Can you go into details on what you are doing with the multiple tracks? Which I think you kind of did, but um, maybe you, would, and you just answered this probably, but are you using different mics, different preamps, analog stages, or is all the processing happening on the digital side? My head exploded when John brought this up. So you kind of did answer that. You're using most of it in the box processing, but on that one or two channel tracks, you... You're doing a loop out to analog gear too? Uh, one of the tracks is a loop out. Um, it's actually one of the settings which is created with a single instantiation of Metric Halo's channel strip plugin where I basically drop all the lows and do a little notch up around 400K to give it that boxy sound on purpose. Right. Um, and then you know a fair amount of compression. It's not over the top. That's a very popular setting with a lot of my clients. And they'll just put that one right on. Um, but then there was another client who wanted more. So then I ran it out into the expressor. And I was actually on the phone with him and I was sending him a, a test. How's this? How's this? Says, okay, that's it. That's perfect. So I just keep using that for everybody uh, so they, they can drop it in. I only do all that so that the person who's producing it, it's only for radio. I don't do the, any of that right. for TV. Um, has a variety, you know, because if you hear radio promos, you'll hear a lot of uh, distortion. Like they'll deliberately distort the sure. announcers, like coming up, this, you know, especially rock stations. Um, and, you know, if I'm on a radio station in, you know, uh, in a rural area where the production guy, a, a lot of top 40 radio stations I do voice work for, the program director is also the afternoon and morning show announcer, the yeah. logs, the meeting with the music. They're also producing and they don't have time and they're not trained in it. They're, they're not geeks. So they're very grateful when I provide them with all these settings because you can just take one of these tracks and put it right on the air and it will pop. Um, wow. Uh, I do like to add a lot of processing to the voice as a radio producer because that way you can bury the voice with the music and sound effects and the voice is still completely intelligible. So now the promo is driven by the excitement of all of the background noise and, and your voice is still there, uh, but it's not front and center. If you don't add that processing, then you have to mix it way in the foreground and then it just loses a lot of its uh, energy. That's really cool. That's fascinating. Um, well, Catherine's going to throw me a curveball here with this one. Can we hear a sample of Jeff's work? Jeff, do you have a do you have something in a in a reel online or a website? Just a little. Yeah, I just I did a new demo for the Benstown thing. Uh, what which, would be the easiest uh, way to find that? Uh, if you go to the Benstown top fifty, and then I'm number six, my demos right there. Uh, I have a website, but those demos are all really old. I have to update them all. I'm in the process of doing that now. That's what happens when you're busy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. <laughs> and and have a kid. But. And have a kid. How old's your child she's she's 10 i don't know how oh you know man you're mine's five yeah <laughs> totally get that well i'll try to scrape that up Catherine, as we uh, as we go along here um it is not bubbling up right in front of my eyes but i'll find it um in other questions we have i need to close them i got too many browser tabs open oh my gosh uh shelly avellino says um 
Question for Jeff. Are you seeing more women in promo now? And what would be your advice for us lovely little females opening the door with promo? So I guess not radio imaging so much, but more promo. Uh, I am hearing more women doing promo, which yeah. is, is fun. And especially in radio uh, and wig in particular is getting a lot of work mm. as a primary station voice. You know, so I'll be on with Annie, and, and she's the primary. I'm the secondary, uh, which is a, a, a gender role reversal compared to, say, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, I, I would go to andewig.com and listen to everything she's doing because she, in my opinion, has it down. She's got a really wonderful, natural delivery. Nice. Uh, it's very real. It's very compelling, and yet it still cuts through, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks for that. Yeah, that's, that's, people want to know, you know, if you, I, I'll tell you, people that are learning the craft of voice acting and our, our audience is all over the map. Some totally newbies and some people with 30 plus years. And one thing that blows my mind sometimes is that voice actors, they'll do the coaching and, you know, they'll study the craft, but they won't study, they won't listen to what is selling or what is really, really working right now. And, yeah. Just to to get the right people to listen to like that is is really hugely helpful. I, I think trends change constantly, and you have to kind of stay on top of that if you want to remain relevant in the game. Yeah, I mean, I get I get voice samples because I I do you know sound analysis for people to tell them how they're sounding, and you know, I can often tell who the who the new voice actors are. It doesn't mean that they're young. Some a lot of times they're older, and I hear that that typical deep. I'm swallowing the voice. Listen how malefulous my voice is, and all this <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I. It sounds good, man, but um, and I, and I never give any tips on on voice acting styles. But I'm thinking, boy, I hope they get a coach that steers them in the right direction. Yeah, um, I've got the sample here. Uh, let me play that without causing a total train wreck on the radio. Let's see here if I can play this. And here we go. Hey, ninety five point one W A P E. What's going on? Jacksonville's number one hit music station. <laughs> the Bieber Show is sold out. So how are you going to get in? Three easy steps. Step one, find the Bieber secret word at kisscleveland.com. Step two, listen to Java Joel Monday at 510. Step three, scream. Yes, even if you're a grown man. Whoa! What? You got to know the Bieber secret <laughs> word to win. Get it at kisscleveland.com. Uh, I can tell you Friday, story August 16th, that the Greg B. Harrell Show will be live on a boat. On a boat, yo! On a boat, yo! On a the Greg B. Harrell Epic Boat Cruise. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that, uh, I, was that some found audio or is that, what, was that from a video? What was that? What, the boat thing? Uh, no, no, that one that just came out of nowhere that sounded like a guy yelling. I don't know. What was that? That was an ad lib. I, I got the, the copy, you know, step three, scream. And then I threw in like, yes, even if you're a grown man. And he ended up putting it on and putting together that bit. So that was <laughs> Wonderful example of collaboration. That, that was Miles at Kissing Cleveland who produced that, who is a genius producer. He's a real pleasure to work with. It's freaking brilliant, man. So that was your voice and also your production, both on that. No, no, no. That was, I, I didn't produce that. That's, oh. that's all that came to me from other radio stations. Oh, no kidding. Far that's the out. hardest thing about doing a demo is getting the work you've done back. You do the voice work and then the, fi the finished stuff is like not always easy to, to wow. cure. Cool, man. Well, that's that fun to listen to. I'm think, glad Catherine maybe found that. Find that. Thank you for playing that. Last but not least, um, <laughs> my daughter's waving a mop. Uh, it's funny. Um, Chaz Gilbert says for Jeff, what is what has he seen as milestone changes in the overall voiceover world over the past 15, 20 years? I mean, is there anything that you just went, wow, that was a milestone? I'm seeing a mop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my pop filter, my glass water pop filter. <laughs> well, let me. Um, Your daughter, you process, are you guys processing your voice now? Because you're just hearing my four sixteen going into a mic C entrance by Core Pro, and that's it. Nothing. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. No, he, he's totally. But our air, we do have a quote unquote air processing going on. Oh, so we that, do. Yeah, there is like an air processing, which you'll laugh, Jeff, when I tell you what it is. It's it's garage, <laughs> Ella. <laughs> I know. I've been in here way too long. I get it. Mommy sent you in here, didn't she? Did mommy send you in here? Yes. I knew it. <laughs> mommy says you work too hard. Yeah, dude. mommy sent me in here. I sent her way getting you to come downstairs. Yeah, she's, That's she's, why my daughter ends up on so many station promos. <laughs> All right. Get in here, Elle. If you're going to be in here, you're going to work. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, these call letters. <laughs> no, but I, I had something really brilliant to say, and I, can't, I lost my train of thought. Oh, crap. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, what's what's something that stands out, Jeff, that over the last twenty years or plus that you've been doing this that just seemed to change the game? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the mop is killing me. <laughs> um, it, the voiceover style, the the, the method, and, and now you hear so many different styles on the air, but I remember when uh, I, I first started doing voiceovers and I was into my music and I was weird and alternative and edgy and all the people I was working with were puking. It's like, hey, now the new car dealer, and they were like, had this big smile and they had what you, we typically call radio-itis. They sounded like DJs. And so you had this very uh, hyper style of announcing and this is back in the 80s and even early 90s. And uh, I started going like the doing the unannouncer thing because somebody uses that. It's like, hey, here's what you can win now. I sound like I don't really give a flying, but you know, and that became the uh, you know the, the style de rigueur, I guess, for for quite a long time, uh, and perhaps still is because uh, now what we're seeing, everybody wants you to be super conversational and sound really real. Uh, the problem with doing that is if you do it to an extreme, there's absolutely nothing compelling about your read. You're just like you're just saying, yeah, I'd like a, a you know latte with you know sugar please um <laughs> so uh so i mean there, there's different styles you know i guess that's been my main observation it's gone to this like deadpan style of reading uh to now a conversational style of reading and then for a while there, there was a lot of energy i was actually doing super hyper uh reads for a long time all the stuff i did for a and e was screaming high energy stuff the duck dynasty and storage wars promos they wanted me to scream at the top of my lungs and that was the opposite of what i had been used to and what I've been doing and what I built my career on. Uh, fortunately, I had the chops to do it. And so, you know, again, whatever the client wants, I'll do it. You know, I, I hear you I on that. I don't think I answered that question properly. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, Absolutely. that, that's quite a, you know, putting a cap on it kind of question. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's, there's a lot goes into that, but you know, your perspective on it is, is certainly important. Um, John, do you want to, do you want to seal this up with any uh, closing statements, man? We've been going for an hour and well, 26 minutes we can go for another hour, but we want to let you guys go to bed. My alarm is going to go off in five hours. Exactly. <laughs> and I've got to get up and be spectacular. <laughs> exactly. Really. No doubt you'll pull it off, John. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Those, 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 uh, little, those low sleep nights always make for, Wonderful morning shows on the radio, but uh, no, I don't know. No, you know what? The, the coolest, the cool thing about this business is that we get to, uh, you know, virtually hang out with our friends and, um, yeah. you know, Jeff and I have spent a lot of time hanging out in our own studios together. <laughs> <laughs> just Never having video though. This, this is a first. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it might be better with just the audio. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you would never have seen the mop. So. Uh, the mop, the, uh, oh. that's going to be on, that's going to be on the uh, year end. Yeah. Do you have anybody? Uh, I think I have a Swiffer. I can bring that in next time, <laughs> yeah. but I know. Uh, thanks for uh, letting me uh, uh, sit in for the mustache. Oh, this is, mm. What do you got here? Uh, it says from the 1800s. I was trying to communicate with you guys when I was muted. So I was using it, it worked though. You, you showed us the Boston one. We, we, caught yeah, the, we the caught that. alcohol was made in Boston. Uh, I got this app. It's called banner and it was really just to order beer at rock shows where it was so loud. You couldn't say, you know, so I just hold it up and the bartender would, dude, like, <laughs> Hey, that'd be really good because for, for people at, at a loud party, you know, how many times has you, have you been at a loud place and then your voice is fried? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what texting is for, though. Yeah, exactly. No, that's all right. Awesome. So, no, I'm I'm cool. I had, you know, it's like it, you just listen to, you know, just sort of wind up uh, Jeff and let him go, and, oh, and totally. so much, so much experience and information, and uh, you know, just Jeff voice over goodness. Jeff, we do these things called roundtables, and you're probably familiar with them. There's some producers roundtables and yeah. and stuff, but um, we do our own, and we do different topics every single month. We haven't done one on radio imaging and production but i think we should and if we did would would you join us for one of those of course i would i, I would suggest getting some current radio imaging producers on they would love i mean we love to talk about our stuff i i, I think you'll agree there's a, a bit of a camaraderie be, behind a lot of the people who are more engineeringly inclined um, there is i mean it's sort of it's an offshoot of the voiceover world or or one of those what are these diagrams where you have the interlocking circles and they overlap whatever those things are called Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. What's the it, word for those? <laughs> Venn a uh, Venn graph. Venn diagram. Yes. Venn diagram. Venn diagram. The, the Venn diagram of VO, you know, overlaps with that part of radio. But 
Um, I think it's fascinating. I think some of our, a lot of our viewers might find it interesting. So we're going to do that in, in the future. We'd love to have you. I mean, radio is a, I mean, people may dismiss radio compared to TV, but it's, it's radio is still a very viable medium at this moment. They, they still hire a lot of voice talent. And a lot of people go from radio to, to, to more VO strictly and, and then back and then they find a lot of TV people get a lot, you know, find they make a lot of money in radio too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone like, well, no, never mind. I think, you know, Brian Lee, who's really famous for TV, but he does a lot of uh, radio too. Yeah, no, it's, tr it's true. But thank you, man. I, I want to, uh, we'll, we'll wrap the show up here in a few. I'm going to, I'm going to plow through our announcements that we have Go at the it. end of the show. Let's we'll see how fast I can do this. Okay. Thanks, thanks to our donors. You know who you are. <laughs> we get a lot of re recurring donors, so uh, we've read your names. Thank you so much. You guys are freaking awesome for helping give us that little extra we need every month. It's wonderful. We have a sponsor um, that is not being run in the commercials right now, but it's it's my wife's little corner of the interwebs called narratorhelper.com. And so if you're doing audiobooks... <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing audiobook work and you want someone to handle pre-reading, proofing, editing, mastering, narratorhelper.com, no-brainer. Movember. Obviously, I'm, I have a really lame attempt at growing a mustache, and I'm not just doing it for fun. My wife certainly hates it. But uh, if you want to, if you wonder why we're doing this, it's to help men's health, and we have a team called the Movos. And uh, if you want to donate to that team, it's at us.movember.com slash team slash one five seven nine one four nine uh we've got a youtube channel which you should know by now but if you're probably not watching us live then you're watching us on youtube at youtube.com slash ewab show um i want to also another little thing about my wife amy golan is now working for edge studio so we're cool. both working for edge she's doing our social media so three hours a day she's doing nothing but social media so if you see something on the net and it's from edge it's probably my wife posting it. So say hi to Amy. Hi, um, Amy. <laughs> uh, November 17th, we're doing this again from, but this time from Doug Turkel's house. Because I'll the be- The announcer. In, yeah, I'll be in Florida. He's so the, He's the one. All right. Yep. Yeah. The announcer. <laughs> Great guy. And uh, we're going to do it from his place. And I'm going to remote control my studio in LA so that the show really goes through the studio here. So I don't have to worry about bandwidth issues and all that stuff. But I'm going to do it from Doug's. It's going to be a crazy train wreck. It should be a lot of fun. I hope you guys tune in for that. And the guest is going to be Zurich. So that's that's really cool. Um, Zurich is a South Florida voice talent. He runs Voice Over Universe. He does a lot of radio stuff too. Yeah, he's Rick Party every afternoon on Hot 105. Yeah, man. It's radio month. Um, yeah. And then Harlan Hogan is coming on November 24th to talk about a book that he's released or is going to release i can't remember i don't have the notes in front of me so if you like listening instead of watching if you just can't stand sitting at a computer and watching us for this long get the podcast version of the show uh it's on stitcher radio it's on itunes ewabs uh is on podbean.com it's you can get it a lot of different ways chances are if you have a podcatcher type app type in ewabs you'll find us on there um like us on facebook follow us on twitter at ewabs underscore show and subscribe to our videos and like us on YouTube. That's how we know that you really like us. Well, one of the best ways. So, whew, how was that? I want to. Uh, I want to plug. Uh, I'm. I'm working on writing a uh, pamphlet. It, please. I'm. I'm. I'm working on a pamphlet. Okay. A so, trifold. Trifold. Trifold pamphlet. Trifold. Okay. Just it one sided. <laughs> Say it, Jeff. <laughs> Say it again, Just, Jeff. It arrives in the mail. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is it That'll one of those that a, folds three ways and then it has a little sticker over the edge and then you have to yeah, tear the sticker I save, open? I save on postage that way. But uh, that'll be coming out soon, my pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see it, man. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks again to our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Centers, VoiceOver Extra, uh, Edge Studio is providing our bandwidth and... Um, and uh, why isn't it in my show notes? It should be there, but it's not because I screwed up. But Voice Zam, uh, Bob Merkel's Voice Zam. Thank you so much for supporting us. And uh, gosh, thanks to our wives. Obviously, thank thanks to Amy for 
<laughs> keeping me on my toes, sending Ellen here to get us to wrap the show up. <laughs> Otherwise, it would never end. We're an hour. Wave there. the mop in front of Daddy's <laughs> camera. <laughs> Kathy Curtin, our our producer, that gets helps with our guests and just keeps the show running. Anthony Gettig in the chat room. Uh, Jack DeGolia, who does our show notes, who are which are unbelievable show notes. I mean, they're indexed by time. You want to see and the law that, firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. <laughs> oh yeah, I know we should. They add still that have on. an office in Howard, Harvard Square, actually. Yeah, uh, right, second off, floor, right there in Harvard Square. Off city. It's um, on the. It's right on the window. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. <laughs> it's freaking brilliant. Oh man, I love it. Um, Tim McKeon, who helps us with our essentials that we do, our voiceover, our Ewabs essentials, and Lee Penny. Last but not least, who puts our podcast on the air? All these people are volunteers. They do it for the love of our business and supporting the show and getting this information to as many eyeballs and earballs as possible. So, uh, dude, thanks. I'm not so guilty for getting paid for this. My God. My God. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you Sorry. take uh, do you t- <laughs> do you take Doge coin? What is that? A uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been a real blast. John, thanks again. I'm you got it, man. I'm George Whittem in the West. And I'm John Taylor in the East. And together we are East West East West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have no idea how hard it is to cue that when you have people in an echo. It's really hard. But anyway, thanks again for watching. It's been a blast. We'll see you guys next week from Florida. Peace. See you, Jeff. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye, Jeff.